When you try to cook ahead, you cook for the week. Yeah, that's nice. Until the next week comes, we're gonna fix that. So today we're doing another healthy meals thing. All right, we're still on the Get Shredded train. I'll be honest with you, it's not going great, but it doesn't matter. We still have that due date and by golly, I'm gonna hit that due date as best as I can. But in the meantime, we're supplying you with the healthiest meals that we can that are macro friendly, blah, 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 blah. whatever. That's less important. What's important is people don't wanna actually put in the time. I get it. You prep for a week's worth of meals and then you just gotta keep doing that over and over and over. But what if you only had to do it once a month? So today I'm gonna give you both the option to do it for a week or how to adapt it for the whole month with some special secret culinary techniques, if you will. So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? Well, how do you make it through the whole month? Josh, it's gonna go bad. You're not wrong, but I have a trick. In the diversity of four different meal choices, a breakfast burrito, chicken fried rice, shrimp bread curry, and a pesto double meat panini. You got options, pal. And yes, they're diet friendly. First, the breakfast burrito. Start with one large rusty potato, peel and grate that burger. On the coarse or fine side of a box grater, place it on a clean kitchen towel, not one of those raggedy ass old ones that's sitting in the corner that's stiff like a piece of glass. Season your potato generously with salt, toss together, then wrap that up in your towel and squeeze as much of the liquid out of those titers as you can. In a medium sized nonstick pan, lightly greased with cooking spray, heat to medium and once, what? That was bad, I don't know what that was. Add your shredded titer and press into the pan tightly. Cook for three to four minutes, then flip and cook for another three to five minutes. Season it with salt. Once crisp on both sides and the inside is just cooked through, it's done. Set that bad boy to the side. Look, I like a little breakfast sausage, but we're gonna use turkey. So get a medium sized bowl, add one pound or 450 grams of 98% lean ground turkey. Yes, this will be dry like those weird little cracks that you see in the desert if you overcook it. So please pay attention, sweetie. Papa's here. Add one teaspoon or one gram of ground fennel powder, one teaspoon or one gram of garlic powder, half a teaspoon or half a gram of ground cumin, half a teaspoon or one gram of onion powder, two teaspoons or 15 grams of sugar, and two teaspoons or 14 grams of fine sea salt. Mix together until thoroughly incorporated. And cooking this is simple, but it's not easy. You don't have a lot of fat in it, so you cook it too under and you have, well, raw turkey. Too over and it's drier than the sands of time. Heat up a medium 10 to 12 inch nonstick skillet over a medium high, lightly grease with cooking spray. Once hot, press your turkey flat into the pan. You know, kind of like a giant burger patty. Let that sear for two to three minutes. Once that's brown and beginning to set, flip and repeat on the other side. This time just let it cook, keeping a watchful eye until an internal tip of 165 Fahrenheit. Cut off the heat and cut into small rectangles or squares. This can all be done in that same pan. Just don't use a knife and get the nonstick coating in your body. It's bad for you. For the egg portion, add one tablespoon or 14 grams of unsalted butter to a 12 inch nonstick skillet that's set over medium heat. Once that's hot and bubbling, add in half a red bell pepper diced, half a yellow onion diced, season to taste with salt. Cook that for three to four minutes, tossing occasionally or until they begin to soften. It's totally fine if you get a little caramelization. That's flavor. In a medium sized bowl, crack in eight eggs and whisk until Add your egg mixture to your veg and scramble, stirring frequently until the eggs are cooked to your liking. Look, if you're like me, then you like them moist. Yes, moist. Now, once your eggs are cooked to your liking, season a taste with salt as needed and on to assembly. If you're doing a single recipe, you'll need six burrito-sized tortillas. Regrettably, our tortillas were a bit small, so we did two mini burritos per serving. But this kind of gives you an idea, right? You can either do a full-size burrito or you can do a mini burrito like this. I actually quite like them like this. Lightly warm your tortillas over a flame to make them pliable, then add a layer of your egg scramble, followed by your turkey, optionally some of your fresh grated cheddar or Monterey Jack cheese, you know, or a mix of both, about one and a half to two tablespoons per burrito. Finally, a light crumbling of your hash brown spread evenly over the top and a handful of fresh cilantro. Roll that bad boy up and repeat with all of your tortillas. Now at this point, you're welcome to lightly toast in a medium sized pan set over medium heat to seal all edges of the burrito. Now at the end, we're gonna go over the storage of these, but if you're doing these for the week, you can just let them cool to room temp, then wrap in plastic wrap and keep them in the fridge to pull as needed. And that's it. Now remember, we have six servings here. So the dietary breakdown of this is this caloric count. Protein Protein, carbs, and fat. Not bad, not bad at all. As a heads up, since we aren't all going to be using the exact same ingredients, these figures can vary. That was our disclaimer for legal reasons. We're still on that Operation Shredded, okay? We're still rolling. I'm not gonna lie, there's been a few hiccups in Operation Get Shredded. It's been busy, all right? I'm still finishing my cookbook, so I might have a little snack here and there. <laughs> Moving on to a very simple chicken fried rice. I will say this is probably the hardest one to 3x recipe because you're gonna need like two woks or two large pans, but don't overthink it. But thankfully, it's very easy. If you're using a wok, make sure it's properly seasoned. Yes, Papa is gonna show you what that means. Generously oil your pan and heat it over high heat, swirling to coat often, and as soon as it begins to smoke, cut off the heat, carefully pour out all the oil, and wipe your wok completely 
completely clean using a paper towel. Now we're ready. Reminder, this is the six serving version. Add one tablespoon or 12 grams of vegetable oil to your wok or large pan, heat over high heat, and once it's ripping hot, add two pounds or 900 grams of chicken breast that's been cut into bite-sized pieces. Spread that out to cover as much of the surface area as you can with chicken and let that sear for three to four minutes. Do not disturb the chicken. Just let it sit in this layer. This is gonna get that nice even browning on the underside whilst the cook comes up through the chicken. Once each piece is browned, flip and allow to sear for another two to three minutes or until brown and just barely cooked through. At this point, your chicken will likely be around 90% of the way cooked through. Don't be scared. Just remove it from the pan. Then add one carrot, finely diced, two medium shallots, finely chopped, and three tight chilies, thinly sliced. Season lightly with salt to taste. Give it a stir fry. For two to three minutes or just until the vegetables are softened, add your chicken back along with three cups or 600 grams of cooked and chilled rice. That means that this rice has been cooked the night before and chilled in the fridge completely. This is important. If you don't do that, you're making the mashed potatoes or fried rice. It's no good. Stir fry that till your rice is hot and your chicken is cooked through. Seriously, I've said this before, so listen carefully. Chicken breast is arguably one of the most difficult things to cook well. I don't know why it's so common. It will overcook extremely easily during this stage, so keep a watchful eye. Now scoot your mixture to one side of the wok, leaving a small gap. Lightly grease that gap with cooking spray. Add in two eggs and whisk together in your wok until nice and homogenous. Season the egg lightly with salt and scramble until cooked to your liking. Toss that together with your rice and finish everything off by adding half a cup or 82 grams of frozen peas, three tablespoons or 48 grams of soy sauce, a pinch of ground white pepper. Toss everything together until hot and she's done. That's six servings of probably the healthiest fried rice I've ever seen in my life, which the health composition comes in with a caloric count of this, along with protein, fat, and carbohydrates per serving. Yes, fried rice really did that. Next, shrimp coconut red curry. This is another one of those recipes that fits your diet, but it tastes like it shouldn't. You're gonna feel no eating it. In a medium-sized pot set over medium heat, add half a tablespoon or nine grams of coconut oil or vegetable oil. Add in two medium shallots finely diced, five cloves of garlic, a one-inch knob of galangal grated. You can also use ginger if you can't find galangal. Okay, it's fine. Nah, nah, nah. Season with salt and sweat for two minutes or just until fragrant and beginning to soften. Add in three ounces or 87 grams of red curry paste. Cook that brother out until it wafts into the air. Once it begins to stick to the bottom of the pan, deglaze with two cups or 475 milliliters of shrimp stock or chicken stock. Look, this is not necessary and it definitely doesn't keep it super healthy. But if you want to balance up the flavor here, I'd recommend adding two palm sugar pucks, which is equal to about two and a half tablespoons. Bring that up to a simmer and reduce the heat to low. Add in two pounds or 900 grams of peeled and deveined shrimp. Optionally, you may need to add about a half cup or 60 milliliters of water if the liquid seems a little too shallow. Bring that bad boy to a boil over medium high. Reduce the heat to low and simmer for five to eight minutes. Add one and a half cups or 350 milliliters of light coconut milk. Add an eight mecrid lime leaves, then cut off the heat. Taste for salt. Optionally, add fish sauce to taste if needed. And well, that's actually it. Now, wait a minute, Josh, what's going on? Yeah, we have a little sous vide bag here. Don't you worry. That's all a part of how we're storing these, which I'll show you in a second. And well, that's actually it. You just serve this bad boy with rice, lime wedges, or cheeks if you like them. And for the calories, we're looking at this. Protein, fat, and carbs. Frankly, surprisingly good and easy. Now, last but not least, our pesto double meat panini. We don't make enough paninis on here, and I think it's time to start fixing that today. Pesto is tough to make super macro friendly, I'll be honest. Or is it? In a blender, combine three cloves of garlic, half a cup or 48 grams of finely grated Parmigiano Reggiano, a touch of salt to taste, half a cup or 112 grams of water, one cup or 30 grams of fresh spinach, one cup or 14 grams of fresh basil leaves, blend on high until as smooth as possible. Then stream in two tablespoons or 30 grams of extra virgin olive oil. Well, that's actually it. It's very simple. You know, obviously taste for salt. If you need to add more salt, do that now. And now for the actual sandwich. If you do some extreme sandwich math calculations, you'll notice that you'll need 12 total slices of bread for six total sandwiches. I got shibata buns. What can I say? In that case, you need six buns. It's a basic math. <laughs> Moving on to assembly. It's very simple. On the inside of your sandwich, which I'm assuming you've split it in half, you're going to add a nice helping of your spinach pesto on both sides of the inside. This is making sense. Then layer on about five ounces or 140 grams of thinly sliced deli turkey, followed by five ounces or 140 grams of deli ham. Top with one large slice of Swiss cheese, a light sprinkling of sun-dried tomatoes that have been very finely chopped. Give your king its top. That doesn't sound right. And that's it. Don't press it yet because it's time to show you how we're going to store all these. So at this point, you can wrap it in plastic wrap. You can place it in the fridge and then you press it when you want it, right? But if you want this to last the whole month, and not get completely destroyed, here's how you do it. So look, in most cases, freezing stuff doesn't really work for most cooked foods, unless...
Let's go all the way back to our burrito. A breakfast burrito like this wrapped up nicely actually freezes very well. You just pop them in. Once they're frozen, you take them out and you reheat in an oven that's set to around 400 to 450 degrees Fahrenheit until they're done. It's very easy. That's it. Now for your shrimp curry, this is arguably the most preferable for freezing out of everything. Ideally, you want to pop these in vacuum sealed bags, one serving per bag, vacuum seal those bad boys. And obviously the other option is to do it in a Ziploc bag. Pick and choose your battle here, but really vacuum sealing is what's going to make these the best. Now you're going to lay it flat in a stack and freeze it in the freezer. The benefit is you could stack 10 of these and they're barely going to take up any freezer space. Then you just pull out a frozen sheet and this is the kicker. Get a pot of water very steamy hot, but not boiling. Cut off the heat and lower in a serving of your shrimp coconut curry. Let those sit in the hot water bath for about five to 10 minutes or until everything is melted and hot. Then you literally just pour that into a bowl that has rice in it. That's it. It comes out like a freshly cooked curry. This is the type of stuff that they do at like Olive Garden and Panera to make pretty much everything. We're using their tools against them for like actual real food. Whenever you're having a day, you pull one out, you reheat it in a hot water bath, you pour it out, and you have an exquisitely balanced curry with borderline no work that day. For the fried rice, very simple. Once your rice has been cooked and it's cooled, then you stuff it in a nice airtight sandwich bag. Make sure to fill it out pretty tightly, but not so full that the bag doesn't close. And then you just freeze that. Now, just like your shrimp curry, you're going to drop that into a hot water bath and let that sit in there until completely thawed and hot. Then you just pour it out onto a plate and that's it. It comes out like freshly cooked rice. I don't know how, it just does. The panini is pretty straightforward and the pesto holds up very well to being frozen. Just lightly thaw a sandwich at room temp for about 10 minutes, heat a two-sided griddle or sandwich press to 375 Fahrenheit and press for five to eight minutes until flat, crispy, the cheese is melted and looking beautiful. Pull it out, split that bad boy in half and boom, look at that. Now each panini sandwich comes with a breakdown depending on the bread that you use, but if you use little ciabatta buns, gives us this for calories and of course protein, carbs and fat. All of this beautiful food for a reasonable macro breakdown. With what you see here, you can get a little over a week's worth of food. But if you want it over the month, triple the recipes, and gosh darn it, you're on your way to Nirvana. Now we gotta see how this held up to being, oh my god, frozen. And hey, maybe it was a bad idea, but there's only one way to find out, with the taste test. Wow, this is a month's worth of food. Well, the options that you have. Obviously, you can do this a million other ways. We're just trying to give you a structure. Mini burrito. Wow, and the flavor is all there. It tastes like any other breakfast burrito. I wouldn't be able to tell the difference, honestly, if you handed this to me. Moving on, Sando. I love sandwiches. I don't like when they're dietary, and yet I feel like this one's gonna be something special. Easy, pickle chip. Anytime you panini press a sandwich, it's gonna be good, period. You're battling through multiple layers. There's crunch on the outside. You have the meat, the saltiness, a little bit of that sauce, kind of making it all come together. This is a proper sandwich. Whether you do the pickle chips or not, it's good on its own. Curry. This is probably my favorite thing I think we've ever made in terms of making a head. See, this is one of the few things that you can make and have absolutely zero idea that it is low calorie. Genuinely. Fried rice. I want you to think and envision Panda Express fried rice, right? Exactly that, except actually good. That's this. High protein and it's calorie effective. Say less. You can have diverse choices like this every day and you can eat for an entire month off these things. Mix and match. Make different fillings for the sandwich. Add different proteins to the curry. Add different proteins to this. Add a different protein to this. See where I'm going with that? Use the freezer to your advantage if you want, but the one thing that you'll always want is B-roll.